Previously on the Tony Kornheiser Show. And then Hannity uh, just lashed out him, said liberal Jimmy Kimmel making fun of the First Lady of the United States and her involvement at the White House Easter Egg Roll, even her accent. Now I'm going to tell you something. What a disgrace, Mr. Kimmel. That's a fifth language. How many do you speak? So then he went back and, you know, and this is on the Very show. Very publicly on their show. Five languages yeah. she speaks. Good for yeah. her. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm, I'm fairly fluent in one. <laughs> fairly. 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 Hannity did on Friday night, because I was watching Hannity on Friday night, so assess where my life's at. <laughs> um. <laughs> this is General George Washington, and you're listening to the Tony Kornheiser Show. All righty, then, we're live at Chatter at the corner of Wisconsin Avenue and Jennifer Street's Northwest in Friendship Heights. Nice crowd for breakfast already. Yeah. We start serving breakfast at 7 Thanks in the morning. David Aldridge is here. Tori Clark is here. Michael Kornheiser is here. Nigel will run the board, do the news. I wanted to, I wanted to do a lot of uh, mail. I came in here on Sunday to go through the mail while I was away, and there's a lot of mail, and I'm going to go through this as if this is one of those shows from the 1950s. <laughs> Arthur Godfrey's <laughs> yes, <laughs> where we do that. So I'm going to take about 20 minutes to go through the mail. I also want to say really good news yesterday. Chris Saliz informed me of really good news. Raju Narasetti got fired. Yes. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Ooh. He's out. Um, wow. How does that taste? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you fired me. Bad day for but him. I, Good but, day for us. Well, it's not, but because I'm yes. a forgiving guy, you are. we need a day bartender. And if Raju <laughs> Narasetti <laughs> wants that job, he can come in and apply. We'll apply. And I won't stand in his way. No. Right. Exactly. Uh, from Todd, Theodore, Andrew, and Lily and Rich from Lebanon, Ohio, please accept this gift bag from my family in Cincinnati, Ohio. It's a can of uh, Skyline Chili being the number one thing, especially a good one served with spaghetti. I don't think of I don't think of uh, chili and spaghetti, but that is the yeah. Cincinnati That's the thing. delight. That's what they do. So thank you very much for that. From it looks like Karsten. I don't know Karsten Western. Thank you for the decades of in- entertainment. I heard that you were missing some ties. I hope that this helps. He sent a bunch of ties, wow. which is very nice. Right. We have a lot of a lot of stuff here. Uh, the together with their parents, Lindsay Elizabeth George and Scott Allen Organic or Organic, uh, they they're being married and they wanted us to sign everything, and everything will get signed. They're getting married the fifth of May, a very lovely day, Cinco de, uh, Mayo. Cinco de Mayo in Dennisport, Massachusetts, and I will sign this and then pass it around for everyone to sign, and sure. we will send all these things back because that's what we do around here because we do. Here's another one. This is oh, this is a birthday card. I heard you're turning 40, and it's happy birthday to whom? Okay, here's the note. My husband, oh, on April 6th, so we missed this. On April 6th, my husband, Rusty, will turn 40. He says that means he's now a man. Makes no sense to me. I'm sure it would mean the world to him if you would give him a mention on your show and sign the enclosed card. He's been a fan for almost 20 years, and his commitment to listening to your show is alarming. You know? Uh, he spent Alarming. much of the 24 hours of my labor listening to your show as he waited for the action to begin. I was drugged up. It was fine. Good man. He calls himself a little despite being 6'7". Big little. Oh, yeah. Yeah, big guy, big guy. Uh, yeah, big yeah, guy. yeah. Big guy. Uh, it says that we live in Wilbon country and continually mentions your show to me. It's Chicago, <laughs> Illinois. And this is from Jen <laughs> Rethemeyer. And so there we go. So we sign this. Just feel free to yeah. chime in as I'm yeah. signing no, things. I have this vision some years from now, not too many years from now, where you're not doing the show anymore, but you're going to toddle down the street with a little walker, and they're going to prop you up at the bar and just let you open mail. Mm-hmm. And that, that's what I would like yes. to do. Here's another one. Totally this is James Leo Healy III <laughs> in and front of Bethany me. Joy Hochstatter. Uh, they're getting married on Hochstatter. May 20th in Dallastown, Pennsylvania. Enclosed as an invitation know. to my sister's wedding. I figured as her older brother, I should be allowed to invite who I wish if you would autograph it, that would be very nice. My parents are both Long Island natives, dad from Valley Stream and mom from South Hempstead, which I know well. I spent my summers growing up eating hot dogs at the Nathan's on Long Beach Road. I know it's swimming at Jones and Lido Beach and enjoying many games at Shea. Being Michael's age, I think Aloha Tower was before my time, though. That's from Peter Hochstadter, so we will sign this. This this leads me to believe, uh, to mention something. There was this terrible, I think we all know about the terrible accident with the Humboldt oh, hockey, yeah, that was awesome. hockey team, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is so terrible. Yes. There was an accident, thank God, not nearly as fatal. There were no fatalities. On the Southern State Parkway in, uh, on Long Island, the Southern State Parkway, it bans commercial traffic. And it bans commercial traffic for a reason. The pass-throughs, the overpasses, are as small as nine feet tall. So you can't take a truck. It's like or SUV a, size. You can't take a truck or a bus under them. It doesn't work. I grew up on the southern state. I know this so well. 
It turned out that the driver with 60 high school students returning from spring break, mm. the driver was from Pennsylvania. And didn't know. And didn't know the rules mm. and apparently ignored where it said no commercial mm -hmm. traffic. Or apparently looked around and saw nothing yeah. above six feet high oh. and it didn't dawn on him. Sheared off the oh. top of the bus. Oh. Luckily, nobody got hurt. Well, nobody was hurt. Well, I mean, minor injuries right. and stuff but, like that. But, but that no. happened on the GW Parkway on the way to Mount Vernon several right? years oh, ago. Yeah. When I go yeah. through the Truck park here in, in Washington, it makes it very clear, Rock Creek Park, yeah. no commercial right. traffic. I was behind a truck yesterday, and a cop was behind me. And I'm thinking, why doesn't this cop yes. yeah. go around and put this and get out of here? Put him it in, says no him. commercial cop traffic. Him, Is there a reason? Yes. Stupid. <laughs> From Kitty Betham, <laughs> encloses a tribute from the Millersville University men's golf team, Go Marauders, in the hopes of becoming the official Division II men's golf team of the Tony Corners podcast. My son Corey is player on the team. I met Nigel and Michael at the WAF ceremony last summer and spent a few innings in, with the lovely Maureen as we commiserated about being empty nesters. So this is very, very nice. There you go. Um, thanks to the podcast, I've met some pretty great people. Queen Esther. Shad from D.C., Tracy Tran, Dauber, and even though I've never actually met the late Dave Mays, we corresponded often through social media. So we have these golf balls, send them go. down to Michael, nice. which is very, right. very, nice. very nice. I'm just going to keep doing this yeah. until yeah, someone says is, stop. Because this is the show. From In the spirit of the wedding season, is chatter available for weddings? Yes, absolutely. Okay. We'll throw everybody out to host a wedding. I like that. Where <laughs> Michael's that? looking up at that no, one. I'm, just, I'm amazed. You will read anything that yes. you pick up. Yes. You've not it's even it's opened like, these notes before. It's like Ron Burgundy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Stay classy, I'm, San Diego. I'm Ron Burgundy. From Scott David Lighty, in my excitement to tell you about my David Aldridge moment um, I, of, of you wearing an Elon golf hat, I forgot that I enclosed a coupon to get you $2 off your next meal at one of our dining halls. Yes. So I got that going for me. And the nice. day, Anyway, I had my first David Aldridge moment yesterday when Michael posted a picture on Twitter of you and he at Augusta National. Do I have any connection to you or Augusta? No, but I do have a connection to the hat you were wearing, an Elon golf hat. I said to myself, wait a minute, I know that hat, I know those colors, I know that school that people mispronounce as Elon. I went to Elon, I now work here as the Senior Alumni Engagement Officer. I'd like to offer up my services to become the official engagement officer of the Tony Kornheiser Show and request that Elon be named the official golf team. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I went to Binghamton. Exactly. That, no, 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 no. Uh, so anyway, anyway, I was wearing that hat in honor of the fact that um, celebrity intern Matt Williamson plays hockey at Elon, and he said, do you want an Elon hockey hat? And I said, no, I want an Elon golf hat. And he said, sure, so I and wore it. Right? And when you post a picture on any social platform, people zoom in, they take these little snippets, like the fact that you're wearing an Elon hat, and, and really take it seriously. Sure. It's well, a good school, by the way, for those of you school. who have children getting Elon, older, David. Elon it's a really good school. Good school. No, I agree. Oh, so I wore the Elon golf hat. I would have hat. given you a pen golf hat if I knew people were going to be looking so closely. Well, one of the things that happens when you go to the Masters is people, you know how they dress. Explain how people dress. What do you, well, everyone's wearing their golf cl uh, clubs, or their colors. Or something aspirational. Yes. Or something aspirational. We call it logo bingo. Is that what it's yeah. called? Yeah. From <laughs> Sheila Halliday in Bloomington, Illinois, I'm writing to you in hopes that you and your staff will please sign the enclosed birthday card for my husband, Aaron Halliday, turns 48 on April 6th. We missed that one, too. In this package, you will find a collection of, my, of giveaways my husband has used over the years to promote our local cab company, Checker Cab of Bloomington Incorporated. When I asked Aaron what he wanted for his birthday, he told me he wanted our company, Checker Cab, to be the official taxi company. It's only yeah. corners. Yeah. That's fine. This sounds like an expensive venture, so I thought perhaps a bribe would work. You would find a couple of our ride local T-shirts, a couple of can koozies, keychains, and our most talked about giveaway, the Checker Cab Condom, which is in there. And a bunch Hello. of beer nuts were in there. Right? Ooh. And we got a whole lot of beer nuts, which was nice. That sounds like a party. Yeah. Uh, and well, 35 minutes into the show, ladies and gentlemen, we're I'm still, still opening mail. <laughs> From Dr. Mark Nelson. <laughs> should go back on spring Please break, Please join Dad. us as we publicly declare our intentions to relate by marriage in Chicago this spring. <laughs> like you, I spent my early years on Long Island and joined the ranks of Natalie Portman and Judd Apatow as having graduated from Syosset High School. Who else graduated from Syosset, David? Lenny Shapiro graduated oh, from Syosset. Fun yes. fact, Sue Bird's mother was a school nurse. How about that? My father also started the Ultimate Frisbee Club at your alma mater, nicknamed Captain Nice. How good is that? And I grew up hearing incessantly about the legendary Speedies. Okay, so this is I very have a nice. big crush on Sue Bird. So this way. is, Sue Bird is great, oh, she's isn't fantastic. she? fantastic. I love her. Yeah, she's, I think she's fabulous. Mm -hmm. And didn't, she's won Olympic gold medals, a number Bunch of them. Bunch of them. <laughs> Bunch of them. They're, much more impressive than the men in Olympic play, although the men have won. The women have been So it's Caroline Crotty-Rogers and Mark Harrison-Nelson on the 12th of May, 
in, on the Chicago Botanical Garden. I think I'm getting close to being done. We're going to need more pens? I don't know. That oh, we're we're going to need more pens. There you go. <laughs> I think we're going to need a bigger boat. Uh, from <laughs> Brian, I guess, in Lincoln Square in Chicago. In clothes, you will find the required winning Monopoly pieces. No, they, I don't no, win. No, no. I don't win, although he got this from the Jewel Osco on Lincoln Avenue in North Center sure. neighborhood of Chicago. I know you only need one ticket, but as provider of these winning picks, all I ask for is recognition that the greatest thing to come out of Chicago is not actually Wilbon, but a million-dollar piece of paper, <laughs> and I'll take 10%, and you can get 10%. Sure you can get 10%. Was there an envelope with this particular card that we, were, what we all just signed? No, we're just signing things. We're just I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We'll go through all these things. And Steve Greenfield, loyal little, um, who read us in style and sports, sends in a bunch of... I, I'm tired. I'm tired of okay. opening these things. All right. So more importantly, and one, more, one last one thing, and this more. is from Elliot Olshansky. This is a gift for Walker Thomas Bootsy Kornheiser. I hope this book is a starting point for many enjoyable talks with your grandfather, someone who enjoys Broadway musicals and is fascinated by celestial movements. Best regard from Suffolk County, where I often discuss both of these topics with my own masculine child, although his favorite Broadway selection is Seasons of Love from Rent. If you pass that down to Michael, that's a Bootsy thing. We, we, we just drained 11 minutes off this show when I really had nothing. Full um, corners offense. Can I, can I describe one thing? I mentioned that Michael and I, Michael and I went to... We went to Augusta mm -hmm. last Monday for a practice round. We got tickets from ESPN. Very, very grateful. Yeah. Happy to have done all of these things. Michael went on Google Maps. Would you please pick up the story? So I, I'm from Washington, D.C. I assume everything starts and goes through I-95. Correct. <laughs> Anything that does not, I'm going to the beach, and I'm going east-west. So I figured we're 25 miles off 95 in South Carolina. Augusta, Georgia is going to be a little bit west of us, a little bit north of us. I figure drive 20 minutes outside of where we currently are, get on the highway, boom, an hour and a half, we cut over west. I don't even look at the list of directions. It's 6.30 in the morning. That's there right. is a dense fog. Mm. Yes. It feels honestly like we're, we are in a like Wuthering Heights situation yeah. in the moors. <laughs> and we drive about 30 miles. We cross 95. And I'm, okay, we got a little shortcut. This will be great, Dad. It's about 20 seven. miles on a one-lane road, and we cross 95, and it's very foggy. Mm. And we've already seen cars on the side of the road. Yeah. And 20 minutes past that point, we start to see smoldering tree stumps. Hello. <laughs> and there's a thing, there's a big sign that says smoke alert. Ooh. Smoke alert. People seem to have lit tree trunks on fire. For the next hour and a half, we stop talking. I mean, it's South Carolina. What do we I know? We stop talking. <laughs> we see no signs of human life, no gas stations. A, a church in every small town and nothing else. Churches. Nothing no, else. No real houses. Children right. in the corner. Uh, yeah. And right. we both start to well, get... Well, they're houses. They're just not great houses. There, there are a few houses, but there's not a lot of... There's not a, 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 a densely populated city, town, anything that we're no, going through. No, no. And, and these things are called highways. Right. Yes. You're on Highway 35. <laughs> it's one lane. And it's you're going down, for, going down for a mile, then making a quick U-turn left, going over, over a couple the railroad, railroad tracks. tracks. Like you're literally going over the railroad yeah. tracks. You're thinking to yourself, this is deliverance. This is not going to work. And your work. radio isn't working, I'm hoping. I don't have anything. <laughs> Dad likes to drive in silence. Yeah, yeah I, I like radio silence. So. But we both immediately start to, my mind goes into, Panic. well, what happens if a tire pops? Yeah. yeah. I forget the masters. How are we going to get out of here? AAA right. is not coming no. to where we Can't are. Can't find current. us on this highway. Yeah, unless they the use highway my Google Maps. <laughs> yeah, we're not going anywhere. So in but, you, but you got there. We got well, there, and because Dad was so fearful of the way home, <laughs> he made us leave at 2.30. <laughs> <laughs> Deliverance. Ned, Ned Beatty. Ned Beatty. So Nobody we, told you you had a pretty much. <laughs> what are we It was required? about 100 and... What are we required? It was about 130 miles. The first 110 miles were, were, was this road. Smoldering wow. These stumps. roads. These Ooh. roads. Smoldering stumps. Did was like any, really once scary. you got there, did anybody ever explain to you the smoldering stumps? Smoldering well, stumps. Well, no. No, that but was we in did. South Carolina. We, we, we ran to into a, a few listeners, <laughs> and they said, hey, how'd you guys get up here? Are you here for a couple of days? No, we're, we were staying down with main laws. We just drove up, and he goes, oh, no. You didn't drive through any names of the town, which I will not name right now. We right. Go, oh, yeah, we, we did. Yeah. Poorest, oh, that's the poorest county in South Carolina. In South Carolina. I'm a lawyer. Yeah. It's the poorest town in poorest county in South Carolina. Mm. Uh, Matt Shershow as well sent, uh, over the weekend I Scherzer, found myself in a supermarket in La Quinta. I played the Mountain and Dunes course. There was no refugee Safeway. If the people, people in La Quinta are refugees from somewhere, send me there. Um, it was in the Safeway family that they gave me these Monopoly pieces. So, again, now, now I have to go home. I have to go through 50 of these things. There are never any winners. We don't win. It just no. doesn't happen.
No. You're one piece away from each of the major prizes, right? Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm going to give, I want to say one thing before we get out of this segment. Later in the show, we're going to do something. I told the people here, we're going to do something that we never do. I only have people on this show that I like, that I know. Mm -hmm. They sit with me. I know them a long time. Before you get on this show, I sort of have to meet you or know you Gotta or figure it out. I have to watch you. I have to know how you talk, stuff like that. Today, for reasons absolutely unknown to me, the famed director, Barry Levinson, is going to be on the show. Awesome. What, why is he on the show? He's a David Aldridge fan. Uh, well, he's an AU graduate. Yes. Is he yeah. not? Oh, AU he is. Go he Eagles. is from the yes. American University. Sorry, okay. Do you know him? Fly. No, I don't know him. Oh. Well, you do now. Uh, I do now. <laughs> well, it was uh, presented to us from the folks at HBO. There's a movie that he just directed Paterno. that came out. Yeah, the Paterno movie without Pacino. But it was said that he's a fan. Big fan of yours. Yeah. I don't believe, I never believe that when people sure. say. Why would you believe that? Well, if he's from, I mean, he's got to be from this area, right? Baltimore. Because Baltimore. Yeah. We grew up, he wrote, he did, did not, he wrote and directed the, the Baltimore trilogy of Diner, Tin Man and Avalon. Yeah. What have you done? <laughs> okay, he did that. No, no, no. But I'm fearful no. that it's going to be awful. You no. should quiz him. Yeah. You should quiz him. Yes. See if this is just BS to get him on the show. They exactly. said that he was a big fan. Yeah, you fear this is going to be a Fran Drescher. You know, like the quiz in Diner. Fran exactly. Drescher. Yes. It was never, it's, it, it yeah. can't be as bad as becomes, that. No, it can't be as bad as that. It can't be as bad as that. That was so, the but, worst. Uh, we, we, that was a favor to Linda Roth. That was the last <laughs> favor. Yeah. Not doing that. Anyway, so uh, great. David is going to, you're going to set the playoffs for us when we return. If you like, Tony. I'd like, I'd, get David I'd more like, coffee. Yeah, David will set the playoffs when we return. I'm Tony Kornheiser. You're listening to the Tony Kornheiser Show. This is the first Leaf ad, and I'm so sorry that the wine tyrant of Tunlaw is not with us today. <laughs> because this is the only wine club tailored to you. The more wine you taste and rate, the better they customize your box based on the wines you like. Now, the mistake I have made is, Michael... We have not yet rated the boxes. We haven't rated the boxes, so they, they, they haven't... They haven't honed in on my particular taste. And it's not mine anymore because most of the wine now goes to Kate. Mm. Because the wine tyrant says, why, why are we paying for him? Why exactly are we paying How for him? How is Kate the big winner of this? I'm <laughs> paying for you to get the wine. My wife will not let you enjoy the wine. <laughs> right. So my little sister-in-law is getting the wine. Well, I don't get it. Here's it's what you get. Scam. You get an introductory three-pack of wine at just $5 a bottle. You get started with an introductory pack. These are wines that usually go for $20. You get them for $5 each. When it comes to buying wine, most of our choices are made out of habit. We don't remember how we found our favorites. We just know that when we're at checkout, those same brands and bottles are in our carts week after week. First Leaf is a new online wine club that puts a stop to boring wine buying. First Leaf makes tasting and rating great new wines an exciting event. The critical thing is what I haven't done. I haven't rated the wines. I have failed. So, so it says the bullet points. I started by answering three quick questions about my wine drinking preferences, which Michael answered. I did that for you. It's just red. That's my wine drinking preference, red. red. You like experts, bubbles occasionally. Yes. Their experts are constantly exploring new wines for me to taste and rate, and I fail to do it. I taste them. I don't rate them. <laughs> First, they've created an introductory three-pack of wine for me based on my flavor profile. You get all three wines for just $5 each, and they're $20 wines. When my bottles arrived, it says I tasted and rated them online. I didn't. I didn't. You're a liar. I, I'm not lying. The copy is lying. <laughs> I tasted them, and that's all I did. But if you want First Leaf to help you, sure. you have to rate them. With First Leaf, you never have to worry about spending money on a bad bottle of wine. They guarantee you'll love the wine you buy, or they'll give you your money back. So try First Leaf today, where buying great wine is simple. To get your three-pack of introductory wine for only $15, go to try, T-R-Y, firstleaf.com slash Tony. That's three wines for only $15 on your first order at tryfirstleaf.com slash Tony. Experience First Leaf today at tryfirstleaf.com slash Tony. This is the Tony Kornheiser Show. The Tony Kornheiser Show. <laughs> this is sent to us by Bernardo in Los Angeles, who says he's a loyal little doing the TK salute. He says, I'm a longtime little who wants to submit my friend Arian Sala's music for the podcast. This song is called Ways of Seeing. It's a fun gypsy dance tune right up your alley. But in all seriousness, Arian is a great friend and musician. And I think you and the crew would get a kick out of it. If you don't, you and especially Silizza can eat it. It's um, Bernardo? I like is, this. This is from Bernardo. This is gypsy music. Yes. Right? Where's Riff? Gypsy dance tune? Yeah, where is Riff? Where's Riff when you need him? And this one is for you. This one is... Chino, this one is for you. It's the greatest musical ever. Still cracking. West Side I'm still cracking it all the time. Can't wait uh, for the sequel, right? Yeah. <laughs> So David is here, and David's David's workload begins in earnest 
next week, <laughs> right? You have yes. like at least two months, two months. of, of two every Two months on the road. Right, two months yeah. of every day. So you won't even get to, to cover the Wizards if they're at home so you can stay I home? I don't know yet, Tony, but my guess would be no. I think we're doing a lot of West this year. We don't know the matchups yet, nope. so we have to do general things. That the, There's only one available spot, though, and it's in the West. In the West, yes. It's a loser, loser leaves town matches that you see in the WWE. <laughs> Denver at Minnesota on Wednesday night. And the winner gets in the playoffs and the loser goes home. And you think who will win? I have no idea. I mean, since it's, since it's at Minnesota, I guess I'll pick Minnesota, but with no conviction whatsoever. So, but we have locked in 15 of 16 Correct. teams. New Orleans so, got in last night. San Antonio got in last night. OKC got in last let's night. Let's do the sort of general thing first. Mm-hmm. Which of the teams that are in this, and it doesn't have to just be one, mm-hmm. but, you could, but the one that stands out is fine. W- what is the most surprising Good team, like when you go, wow! I didn't, I didn't realize that they were that good. Um, maybe Utah or Portland. I would think out west. Uh, I think I didn't think Utah would get in the playoffs this year because they lost Gordon Hayward, um, who's their best player, and the guy they built the team around for several years, and he went to Boston, and they got nothing back for him. So you think a team like that's going to take a step back, and they didn't uh, because they drafted Donovan Mitchell, uh, who was. <laughs> sensational uh, and is one of the two finalists for rookie of the year and Rudy Gobert's been outstanding defensively so I, I would say they're probably the biggest surprise because well let me take let me say change that Indiana's the biggest surprise because Indiana lost their best player well, they as trade, well they traded Paul right. George and look I'm not going to lie I thought they got rooked I thought it was a terrible deal at the time you know they got Victor Oladipo and they got uh, Sabonis uh, and that was it. And everybody in the league, including me, thought they that was awful. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Was awful Victor Oladipo is a homeboy for He's you. He's a Dematha, one of Dematha's zone. Yeah, you know, one Dematha and everything. And Oladipo, Aldridge, Maskey. Exactly, <laughs> the big three among at others. <laughs> yeah, <I'm crazy. laughs> among others. And so everybody thought they were going to be the worst team in the league, or one of the worst teams in the league. And not only are they not the worst team in the league, they're been one of the best teams in the league. They won forty nine games. They have had a great year. And both those players have done well. Oladipo has been really outstanding. Good. He He's made been, the All Star team. Yes, and rightly so. And will probably be most improved player and pro- may well be one of the all NBA players. So I don't know anybody on Utah at all. I mean, mm-hmm. I knew the people you mentioned. And I remember Utah is coached by Quinn Snyder. Correct. That's right. And Quinn Snyder was a, a very good player at Duke. Mm-hmm. And Quinn Snyder went to coach in college at Missouri. He did. And it was bad. It was not good. It he, was bad. It was and the good. rumors about him Correct. were bad on Correct. a personal level. Correct. Bad. And it seemed like he went into an exile of sorts. Yeah. He must be a pretty good coach. He's a very good coach. Yeah. He's like a Brad Stevens level of good coach. Yeah. yeah. No, he's very good. And man. most of the people who end up as head coaches leaving the Duke program struggle. Well, yeah. They have struggled. They have. There's not been a great success. I mean, you could say Tommy Amaker at Harvard, right, right. but not at, the, not at the D1s, right. you know, the big D1s. Right, right. May well, I interrupt and ask yes, why? Yes, yes. Ah, I don't. I don't know. Good question. David. Don't know the answer to that. Um, no particular reason. I mean, I don't think Chris. I mean, Chris Collins got Northwestern to the tournament, which they had never gotten. To, That's right. So, so he gets. That's a feather in his cap. Um, He's the know. youngest of all of them. Yeah. He's coached the fewest years of all of them. Yeah, they've been about five or six, and they haven't. Yeah, and Quinn Snyder, um, you know, had some growing up to do. And he's in the pros now, not in. Not but in he college. got in the in the San Antonio. Um, Fraternity pipeline, yeah, yeah. and and t- coached their their you know, G League team for a while, and and has really kind of built himself back up. And all credit to him for doing that. So if Utah and Portland and Indiana are the most surprisingly good teams, mm-hmm. which are the most disappointing teams to you? The Washington Wizards. The the most <laughs> by far. Oh, see, I would have said, good I would have said Oklahoma City. Well, here's the thing with Oklahoma City. I thought they. You know, you look at the talent, but you realize there's a lot of moving parts here. You know, you've got Paul George who's really talented and really good, but is in a contract year where he's got a foot out the door. <laughs> That's right. You know, and so, and then you bring in Carmelo Anthony right before the start of training camp and tell him, well, now you're the third guy. And he's never been the third guy before. He's always been the number one option. And you got Russell Westbrook who has to now maybe defer to guys, and he's never deferred a moment in his life. That's why he's Russell Westbrook. And so you've got all these pieces, and you go, how is this all going to fit together? So it's not that I thought they were going to be awful, but I thought, and I think with some justification, it was going to take them a while to kind of make this work. And, and they made it work enough so that they're in the playoffs. But the Wizards, that's the, they've had the same team now for three or four years. This is the team. And they had gotten to the seventh game of the second round last year, and they probably should have won that series. Um, 
And you thought, okay, so there's, it's time for them to take the next step, and they didn't. They haven't. So I brought this up yesterday, and it is not original thought by me, because mm -hmm. I read it in the Washington Post, and I don't know who wrote it. I think it might be Neil Greenberg, but I don't know. And by the way, we have to get Neil Greenberg on this week, right, Michael? We have to get him on for the hockey. For uh, pucks. For our, yeah, for right. hockey. Yeah. But he was saying that he charted how many times, wh whoever did it, mm -hmm. charted how many times Scott Brooks and Bradley Beal have said, coming oh, yeah. out of a game, this is unacceptable. Yeah, about and I said, times. but it's totally acceptable exactly. because they never change exactly. anything. Nothing is, they send the same people out for the same amount of minutes in the same basic choreographed Ro rotation. Move. Yeah, so what? That's why they're disappointing because they, you know, this is a good team. This team is good enough to beat anybody. They play well right. against good teams. Yeah, I mean, look, last week they go into Cleveland. They're up 17 with seven minutes to go. The game's over. And then they stop playing, and Cleveland comes back, and LeBron beats them. You know, and they're like, well, we played good. Well, but you lost. <laughs> you know, right. so that's the, that, that is what drives you crazy about the Wizards. They obviously have enough talent that they can beat anybody in the Eastern Conference. They've beaten Toronto twice in Toronto, once without Wall. So, I mean, you can't tell me they can't beat people. They, but then they lose to Dallas. They lose to Atlanta at home. They lose to the Knicks at home. This is ridiculous. But uh, the pushback I would have is that, there are no bad teams in the playoffs. Well, so, true. So they've done well against good teams. Are they going to finish eighth? Well, they could. Well, they Seventh could, or eighth. They could still finish sixth, actually, because Miami lost last night. So there's a chance they could finish sixth. More <laughs> likely, I think, is that they'll finish seventh. And then they'll get Boston, who is depleted. Who's injured. Yes, very injured. So they could. And, and all they have to do is well, win one series for you to well, think that they're good. See, here's the thing. Everybody's saying that. Everybody's like, well, Boston, you know, they don't have Kyrie Irving, and, they don't, and Hayward's out, and yeah. so they're easy pickings. No, they're not. <laughs> you know, Brad Stevens, to me, I think he's one of the top two or three coaches in the league. And he's going to coach up what he's got. And he's got enough talent with Brown and Tatum and some of those guys. This is tailor-made for the Wizards to go into that series and lose in six games. <laughs> because the Boston's going to play hard. They're going to play smart. And they've got young guys that are athletic and can do things. And the Wizards are going to come in and go, well, we're better than them. And putts around for three or four games and wind up losing the series. So what if... If you if you like the Wizards cast mm -hmm. and you like everything about the Wizards, what do they have to? Do? What's wrong? Is there one thing that's wrong? Yeah, well, the the things that the, they're from a talent standpoint, they've got they've got good talent, but I don't think they have elite talent. Right. Um, they need, and that's why I think John Wall was kind of advocating for them to go get Paul George. They need another elite level player. They need an elite level player. And if they had another one, if they had one like that to go with Wall and Beal, I think they could make a move, but they don't have that yet. So they've, you know, they've got good players. Markeith Moore is a good player. Gortat's a good player. Uh, Kelly Oubre shows flashes of being a good player. But I wouldn't, I don't think anybody would say any of those guys are elite level players, all-star level players. They need another all-star. Otto Porter, not an all-star. No, player. he's nice a player. good player. Yeah. Very good player, but not an all-star. What do you make of the 76ers? Well, it's been phenomenal. I mean, and, and that's, you know, you have to give Sam Hinkie a lot of credit for drafting Embiid and sticking with Embiid through two years of injuries where he didn't play at all and getting Embiid on the floor. I mean, he's the guy. I mean, all respect. You don't just have to give him a lot of credit. you got to give him a sandwich now because he has no job because <laughs> oh, he got fired. He teaches out at Stanford. He's doing fine. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> he's doing fine. Um, so, but Embiid is the guy, all due respect to Ben Simmons, who's had a great rookie year. But Embiid's the, the guy that makes that thing work. So, but Wilbon yesterday said to me that he, and I'm, I'm, if not directly quoting him, I am very, very close. He mm -hmm. said, I was wrong about Ben Simmons. Yes, He's having wrong. one Stupid of the wrong. greatest <laughs> rookie seasons I've ever seen, and he compared it to Magic Johnson. Yeah, well, yeah, he's, that, he's been great. He's been great. Um, and, and in an era where everybody shoots threes and everybody insists he, he shoot threes, he, he doesn't, doesn't shoot any. No. And, but he's a 6'10 point guard, so he can get where he wants to go. That's, that's the equalizer is his size and his ability. So it's an amazing story. Can they come out of nowhere and win? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Like, to me, could that, they win the East? To me, that's the one team that I wouldn't want to play if I was LeBron. Anybody else. They can beat everybody else. Everybody right. else. And they can beat them handily, I think. Philly, because of their size and their athletic ability and their ability to make shots and and Embiid is a monster, Tony. He's a monster. Nobody, you, nobody can deal with him. So if he's healthy and, and Simmons is playing well and, and they're getting more out of Fultz than I thought they could possibly expect, 
they're dangerous. That's a dangerous team. So I always take the position that LeBron James – and I take this position because he is always in the finals. <laughs> it's not like I'm, this is not, I'm not wishful thinking because right. right. he is always in the finals. Right. I always take the position he will be in the finals. Mm -hmm. And this year I take the position that once again, and I'm happy for this, it will be Golden State and it will be Cleveland. Cleveland. Mm -hmm. But I'm a little bit concerned about I, it, Kevin Durant took a direct shot the other day at Steve Kerr, mm. a direct shot in which Steve Kerr accused his team of not caring right. enough to right. play defense. And Kevin Durant said, our problem is strategy. There's only one guy who's, whose job is strategy. Yeah. That's Steve Kerr. Yeah. Kevin Durant's not stupid. No, he knew what he was saying. Yeah. He took a direct shot at Steve Kerr. Mm -hmm. Should I make more of that or less of that? Well, I mean, I think their margin for error is much smaller than it's ever been um, for a lot of reasons. I, and part of it is just teams do catch up. You know, it's it's pro sports. There's smart other smart people in other places, so they catch up. They figure out what you're doing, and they figure out ways to stop it. Even Golden State. So, um, but I think when they're healthy, they're still the best team in the league, and they're still better than Houston, and they'll still beat everybody. But I don't know if Steph Curry's going to be healthy until we see him out on the floor again. Are there coaches likely to be canned at the end of the week? Because they oh sure, who's sure. who's out? Do you think? Well, I mean, I think certainly you look at Detroit. They had a lot of expectations. Stan Van. Yeah, a lot of expectations, and a lot of people thought they should be in the playoffs, and they've spent a lot of money over the last few years to bring people in. They made a big trade before the deadline to bring Blake yeah. Griffin in, and it didn't work. And um, You know, he's been there for f four years now. With total control. With total control, and they've made the playoffs once. Right. And so at some point, you got to be accountable for that. So I certainly think you look at Detroit as a, as a place where there could be a change. There could be a change in Orlando. I don't think it's Frank Vogel's fault necessarily, but it's a very young team, and they just haven't played very well and haven't done a whole lot. So there, there's a couple of places. There'll be two or three, maybe four, um, that may have some changes. Okay. This was a very good preview. Well, was that good? This was a I always get great material to talk with my sons after. This is a <laughs> very a very good preview, but especially considering we don't have the matchups. No. So right. We don't know I, who's playing it's who. Weird. You know. We'll know Wednesday. Yeah. All right, good. Uh, so we will take a break now, and Nigel will do news when we return. I'm Tony Kornheiser. You're listening to The Tony Kornheiser Show. The Tony Kornheiser Show. I think this is a new sponsor. I believe it is. Fa Framebridge. This is a new sponsor. So now I'm going to read. This is the copy that's written for me. Please take this with a grain of salt, you know, for personal endorsements, because, you know. But I'm going to, I like the idea of this. I'll just read it. I have to tell you guys about an amazing new service I found called FrameBridge. They make it super easy and affordable to custom frame your favorite things from print and posters to the photos on your phone. And a custom frame photo from Fame FrameBridge. Boy, that is hard to say. <laughs> a custom framed photo from FrameBridge. I mean, so come on, come on, like. makes for the perfect Mother's yeah, Day gift. It's ridiculously photos. easy. You order in a few minutes and Framebridge will send you a one of a kind frame picture that your mom will love. That perfect gift from mom is probably already on your phone. See, I don't, now we get into my stuff. Mm -hmm. I have some photos on my phone that are sent to me by the wine tyrant uh, most of the time. And they're just there. And I don't know how to call them up. And I don't know how you would be able to take them to say out of a phone and put them into paper or put them into a frame. I mean, I... I, I bet you could call someone at Framebridge and they could tell you. That's could what you I'm thinking. Try pressing know? print. Here's <laughs> how it works. Is there a print on your yes. phone? Yes. yes. Okay, let's be respectful. This on is your the first phone? time. Yes, it'll air print. <laughs> what does that mean? It'll air print to Framebridge. Oh. There you go. Just go to Framebridge.com. Pick a great photo. The expert team at Framebridge will frame it and send it straight to you. Or they can deliver it straight to your mom in times from Mother's Day. So we're doing, we're doing very targeted things there you go. Yes. preview your item online in any frame style choose your favorite or get free recommendations from their talented designers the amazing team at Framebridge will expertly frame your item in days not weeks or months and deliver your finished gift ready to hang the best part instead of the hundreds you pay at a framing store and I, now I'm going to parenthetically add there's a framing store that I go to and I think it's very very good yeah. but it is pricey oh yes it it is, it, this is a pricey item it they, is. they're not a sponsor either so. no That's their really prices nice. start at Framebridge $39 and all shipping is free Plus, my listeners will get 15% off their first order at Framebridge.com when they use the code Tony K. Framebridge has thousands of five-star reviews and even offers a happiness guarantee. If for any reason you aren't 100% satisfied with your order, they will make it right. Um, okay, then these are the must-reads. Order a custom gift for any mom in your life right from your phone. Go to Framebridge.com, use the promo code Tony K, and save an additional 15% off your first order. Just go to Framebridge.com, promo code Tony K. That's framebridge.com, promo code Tony K. But I'm telling you, it is hard to say 
That, that is a very hard thing to say, a custom framed photo from Framebridge. That's F hard, for, yeah. right? A lot of F sounds in that. Yes, yes sir. This is the Tony Kornheiser Show. <laughs> this is a song called I Had a Girl. It's written by Gilbert Neal. It's off the album The Mayor of Estes Park. It's a perfect jingle, I'm told, when I read this. Yes, that's, that's pretty much the entire note, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Short and sweet. It's very nice. Now, Tori, did you want to talk about a Mother's Day gift? Yes, I do. That has a little NRBQ. If anybody knows yeah, NRBQ, yeah, right? Sure. Okay, I like yeah. NRBQ. Okay, so Brian, who is not here today, but hopefully will be in tomorrow for his omelet. Um, Brian's mom <laughs> raised several kids. They're all allegedly you know, grown adults now. Yeah, and she right. does what most moms do at that stage, which is she packs up a bunch of the crap in the house and sends it back to the kids. So several Boy, years would ago, I like to do that because in Michael's bedroom in my house... Still is her, are his wedding presents. Hey. We're making progress. Ah. We're not making yeah. no progress. Huh? We've taken two of the boxes. There's like ten boxes left. Are they in the back of your car? Yes. <laughs> Anyways, so she packs up the photos and the Boy Scout badges, right? And she throws them all in a box and ships them to us. I don't want these things in my house, right? So the box full of these old <laughs> of photos. So. Brian is a baby. Brian first communion kind of thing. So Brian figured out something a couple years ago. And a few weeks before Mother's Day or before her birthday, Sends his mom's back. birthday, he goes and gets a new frame. Right. And he puts a picture of himself, in one of the pictures, in the frame. And he writes this really loving note about, Mom, thank you so much for raising me. And he sends it off to her. Well, she's forgotten that she sent them back to him. <laughs> yeah. She thinks this is the most thoughtful thing a son could ever do. That's so a good idea. just package up all those old photos. That's a good idea. Send and you can back. use Frame Bridge. You could use Frame Bridge. You you could. You could. Michael, if people want to send us music, we haven't done this a couple of days. If people want to send us music, how do they do? That. Send your music into the show, Jingles, at Tony Kornheiser Show. Dot com. And what are we selling? we got to be selling something. We have some great shirts. We have the Reset the Board to Zero. Yeah. Uh, and we have <laughs> the <laughs> Mr. Dr. Porthauser navy blue t-shirt uh, available at shop.tonycornothershow.com. we got to move these things. You know, we also sell chatter t-shirts here. Have we gotten the have we gotten the new it order? It appears we only have sizes small, small and medium. Yeah, whatever. Which is great. Makes it look like you've been working out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Rip off those sleeves. Oh, yeah, huge. All right, do, Get you a have, do you have? Uh, I do. I have some, some news stories. We'll start off with baseball, Mr. Tony. Uh, how does nine innings, two hits, no walks, ten strikeouts sound for you? Sounds like Max Scherzer going <laughs> for another Cy Young award. <laughs> yes, it does. And by the way, cold weather. Where oh, they, yeah. they said. They said 19,000 people no were there way. last no night. Chance. There's no zero chance, chance that that's true. <laughs> yeah. Zero chance. They left a lot of people on. Yep. How'd Ryan Zimmerman do? He did. He went <laughs> uh, you Zimmerman know, over comfortable four with for two, four. Yeah, two yeah. strikeouts. He's batting 0-9-1 oh. at the moment. Well, at least yeah. nobody was in scoring position when he was at. Yeah, there were a few. <laughs> there were a few. Luckily, they got all the runs Scherzer needed in the first inning. After Zimmerman took a looking yeah. third strike with two on, Howie Kendrick came oh. through with a double. Yeah, but he's well rested. That's the important. Thing. Yeah, that's you know that rest in spring training. <laughs> yeah, uh, Bryce Harper. Forget his uh, stolen base. Oh, oh that's Matt, right. Max Scherzer stole yeah. a base. Oh, that's right. Yes. Um, I did not watch this. Max Scherzer also went up there to bunt in about the third inning, and didn't really offer at the first two right. that were called strikes, and then bunted bunted foul and let out a widely known Anglo-Saxon. <laughs> word that mm. you could hear on the moon. <laughs> on the moon. He is quite competitive. Yes. Yes. Oh, moon. Um, uh, Bryce Harper walked three times. Yep. Was he walked intentionally? Any uh, of those? Yes. Unintentional, intentional. Yeah. Oh, was just or intentional, intentional, unintentional. Yeah, they want him to nibble at something. But there. this wasn't Joe Madden saying, we're just going to walk you and get inside It's getting close to that. Well, they're, they're to, walking, for him, Zimmerman. walking him because a guy behind him said he's 091 right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> We've seen this before. We've been to that movie. Yes. Uh, the Astros, uh, who've gotten off to another great start, nine and two, they beat the Minnesota Twins two nothing behind Justin Verlander. Thirty-five nice night. degrees at the start of the game, <laughs> and doesn't get warmer, kids. No, no it's not going to heat doesn't up. Doesn't get warmer in Minnesota at night. Not quite as good as his former teammate on the Tigers. Seven innings, four hits, no runs, one walk, nine strikeouts for Verlander. Okay. Who's Verlander, Verlander's ERA right now is one point four five this year. Since leaving Detroit yeah. Oh, yeah. to go to Houston, in 14 appearances, 14 starts, including playoffs, yeah. he's 11-1. and one. Is that something wow. I could interest you in? <laughs> Justin uh, does, Verlander. Does have that one loss. Justin Verlander. <laughs> That, how's that for a pickup at the trade deadline? That's not, that's not bad. Yeah, and that's and by the way, uh, what, didn't the story go that he talked it over with uh, with girlfriend yes. Kate Upton? Yes. Or maybe fiance at this point. I'm not sure. Now uh, married. I think they're married. Now married. Now. I think they're married now. I'm just crossing that I off think my they're list. married. Um, 
We had him on the PT. He's a great yeah, guest. Seems like he would be, yes. Mm-hmm. He's just great. I mean, if, if you're ever thinking to yourself, when they leave what they're doing, who actually goes into a booth? Yeah. He's one of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Okay, yeah, Kate Upton's great. best line, which we can't, we can't say yes, on the, the air. Si- yes, I am voting. Say, yes, can't say it on the air. So great. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> look it up, kids. <laughs> to Tiger Woods uh, said he's going to take a break after... His, uh, He's not listening he finished, to Sansa. Yeah, finished thirty second at the Augusta, moving to eighty eighth in the world rankings. He said, "Generally, after this tournament, I put the clubs away for a while. I usually take three to four weeks off through my entire career, and usually the clubs are put in the closet. I just kind of get away for a while." Michael, is that a good idea by Tiger? It's fine. I mean, he's he needs to expand his schedule a little bit, but I don't think this is the time, having come off the. Florida, and then later into the winter, the California swing. Yeah. So he needs to play some tournaments that are not these premier top-tier events where he can target areas of his game. I know Sansi wants him to work on his driving. The, the iron play is what let him down, and I think that was partially from fatigue. Yeah. Yeah. But, Michael, you coach the team. Seriously, Joey. You are a yeah, coach Joey, as short, short. well as many other things. <laughs> not, playing, <laughs> not playing well, usually the answer is not don't practice. Well, he's able to practice in targeted ways on his own, and I think he's discovered. He, he uses Not these, he's put the clubs away. He's using these tournaments to, to work on specific areas of the game. So we've seen the short game addressed. We've seen the putting. We've seen driving, which he's turning into a strength again for the first time since two, the early 2000s. Mm-hmm. So I have, I have trust in that, and I think he can come back to some of these early summer tournaments. Sounds like a 10-year plan. He doesn't have he, 10 I years. Think, I think he's in for the long haul. I, I, don't, I don't think he's going to have a couple of bad tournaments and say that's it. No. I think he wants to play again. I think he likes playing now. Sure. Because he, he, he hasn't played in a long I time. I think he's surprised at how well his body's responding yeah. to the travel right. and the constant Let me offer quiet. congratulations to Jeff Kaplan. Jeff Kaplan is a son-in-law of my dear friend from grade school and high school, Peter Lazarus, and he works for the Fort Worth Star-Telegram, and he just won one of those McClatchy Awards oh, cool. that was given out. He did, a, he did a story on youth baseball gone wild like that they were that in in Texas they were recruiting 9-year-olds and 10-year-olds from all across nice. the country for baseball teams and, mm-hmm. and he won an award for it. So Clatchy, I'm not familiar with that. Is that that's a newspaper syndicate. Correct. Yeah. They own a lot of newspapers including the Fort Worth Star Telegram. Do very good work. Yeah, mm-hmm. so they're good. So uh, let me go back to, to Jeff. Let me go back to baseball for a second. Um, I don't know if everyone saw the fracas that almost occurred between Diamondbacks manager Tori Lovello and uh, St. Louis Cardinals catcher Yadier Molina. This is after uh, a couple of close strikes were called in the favor of uh, the Cardinals. Yes. Lovello came out and said, you know, you, he's framing them. Those weren't strikes. And he, and he called him, he called him a, a, a then, word that's yes. a hyphenated word that begins with mother. <laughs> <laughs> and he did that twice. Could that be? And so Yadier <laughs> Molina, who is, if not the best catcher in baseball, one of the two or three. He's Correct. Great. Oh, yeah, he's yeah. a great player. Yes, Yadier yes, Molina. Absolutely, yes. Yes. Yadier Molina like went after him at some point yeah. and now wants him to be fined. So we'll go around the room. Should he should uh, Tori Lovello be fined? Uh, I, no. I mean, that's a little much what he did and said right in the guy's face, but I, I doubt he will be fined. Should he be fined? I would probably fine him a buck or two, yeah. yeah. Should he be fined? No. No, Tori. Quit taking all the fun out of all these games. I think we should wire the, you know, I want these people mic'd up so we can really hear for ourselves what's going on. Michael, should be fun? I think in today's day and age, yes, but personally I would say no. I think the umpires handled it the way that they should have in the moment, and I think that should be enough. Nigel, should he be fined? I don't think he should be fined. I think Matt Williams should probably be fined for something. (laughs) He should not be fined at all. No, he should not. I mean, this is, it's actually... It's actually, in a weird way, great praise for Yadier Molina mm-hmm. um, by using, the, using that term. What I do want to see, though, is the next time they play, the next time Arizona plays St. Louis, mm-hmm. I want to see that Tori Lovello orders a pitcher to drill Molina <laughs> right in the ribs. Exactly. Right in the ribs. Right. Exactly. So you want to find? That, that's fine. Yeah. Fine that. How about yeah. this? Chew on yeah. this. Yeah. By the way, and, and in terms of, of that phrase, which you're not allowed to say. No. Big you're not, John, you're really not. Big John said Coach it all the time. Said all the time. And when he said it to you, that was sort of a badge of honor. Yes. You're like, oh, I just got that from, I made from it. Coach. Yes. yes. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Um, and speaking of Big John and Georgetown, looks like Marcus Derrickson is going to forego his senior year. He has declared that he will enter the NBA draft and hire an agent. Have you heard of this guy? Yes. Is he a first round <laughs> pick? No. <laughs> why is he doing this? Will thing? be playing. I don't know. Tom. He's headed to Greece or <laughs> Spain. Greece or I mean, China, you know, why like are you that? doing that? Okay. Yeah. Uh, now we will take you to a, a difficult situation for a company that I believe you like, uh, Neko. 
Necco, Necco wafers. Yes, I like Necco wafers. The New England Confectionery Company. I like Necco wafers. I had them as a child. Yeah, they're sort Me of. Um, you either love them or you despise them. They've been called. They at look times, like communion wafers. Yeah, mm -hmm. they've been described at times as tropical. Not that that's my side of the street. No, that's, <laughs> you, know, you know. But I know it. It's been described as tropical drywall and plaster <laughs> surprise. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but they, I like the chocolate ones. Yeah, the do. chocolate ones are your favorite? How like are you them. supposed to eat them? Do they dissolve? Do you they bite them? They do not them? dissolve. No. You, you bite them. Yeah. You bite them. They do not dissolve. Sometimes you it chip would take, It's glacial to get them to dissolve. <laughs> they do not dissolve. No. Um, but they uh, might shut down its Revere, Massachusetts plant. Lay Revere! Off. Revere! Yeah. <laughs> Lay off the majority of its... It gets me every time. Lays off the majority of its employees. So now there's people... Well, nobody's buying them anymore. Well, now everyone is trying to buy yeah, them. Yeah, this is going to be fans, like... fans, this would be... What you would probably yeah, want to do... I'd buy a case. ...is you want to contact the, like, the, the people that sort of distribute this and say, how many Necco wafers do you have? I will take them all. Apparently that's... People are trying to corner the market on these before yeah. they go away. Well, didn't the same thing happen? Wasn't there a... A cake a few years ago. The Twinkies. The Hostess Twinkies. Twinkies. Yes. Oh, yeah, right. Twinkies. Yes. And yes. then there was a or run on cakes. them, and then they, they were like $10 a Twinkie or something right. like that. Yeah. I think Talbert's and River Road sells Necos. Is that right? If locals are looking. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And Chuckles, which are also... Uh, love Chuckles. I love Chuckles. Yes. What's your favorite flavor of Chuckles? Would you prefer... To a child licorice. Yeah. So there you heard it, folks. Licorice yeah. chuckles. Send I love them chuckles. Away. Send like them that. to chatter. Chuckles are nothing. They're just nothing but sugar. Yeah. It's sugar, With sugar on top, top of sugar. <laughs> it's it's a little crystallized sugar they on the are, little cube of sugar. They are a red, green, yellow, licorice, orange. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. what they are. Nice. And some other, licorice in the middle. Some nice. other Necco products. Mary Jane's, you familiar yeah, with? Yeah, oh, yeah. Mary Jane's are peanut, uh, peanut brittle, peanut sure. butter. Squirrel nut zippers, which I thought was I also the name of yes. a band. Yes, I've heard of them. No, I don't know those. Uh, uh, clock bars. I think we're all familiar clock with those. Clock bars are great. Yeah, those are very good. Really good. Sweet well, how, are they going, how are they going bankrupt? Well, you know, These are good candies. Fitness craze. What's wrong with kids country? that they don't buy the candy anymore? Yeah, eat more sugar, kids. And I'm not sure it's Sky Bar. I think Sky Bar might be a Necco product, is it? I don't know that. I had a Sky Bar yesterday. I went to Sky Bar in L.A. once very yeah. nice. I had a sky bar <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Describe what a, what a sky bar is because a lot of people don't it's know not, that. It's like I don't think they're using real chocolate anymore. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I, I think sky bars are made up of the leftovers of the other ones. Yeah, it's got a little caramel, a <laughs> little nougat, a little chocolate in it, a little, little, little nut, peanut yeah. butter. It's, yeah, it's, or something like that. It used to be great, and it's like me. It's not very good anymore. <laughs> We used to be great, yes. but not anymore. Um, I, right. I know you wanted to say some melancholy happy I just wanted to, to talk Cezanne, about Susan Onspach, yes. who, who died uh, earlier this week at 75 years old. She was uh, she was an actress of consequence in the 70s and, yeah, and right. then basically disappeared. Yes. Yes. So I, I don't. She she was with Jack Nicholson in Five Easy Pieces, which mm -hmm. is a great movie. I'm just going to read some of the words by Matt Shudell about this. It said. Um, Miss Ansbach uh, taught acting and had occasional stage and TV roles, but she increasingly turned to Nicholson for financial support. They had worked together on five easy pieces in which Nicholson played a once promising classical musician who was working as an oil field roughneck. Miss Ansbach portrayed a pianist engaged to the brother of Nicholson's character. In the film, they had a steamy love scene, which they apparently reenacted in an off screen romance. Miss Ansbach later said Nicholson was the father of her son and was born in 1970. So that's one, okay? Mm -hmm. Nicholson has never publicly acknowledged, uh, acknowledged she's the father of the son. Susan Florence Onspach was born in 1942 in Queens, New York. Her father worked in a factory. Her mother, the daughter of a Wall Street banker, was disowned by her family from marrying a blue-collar worker. Wow. Do you wow. think that that might be something to talk about around wow. the table? Miss Onspach studied theater at Catholic University in Washington and was the school's homecoming queen yes. in 1961. She later took classes at Actors Studio in New York and appeared in off-Broadway productions with Robert Duvall, Dustin Hoffman, and John Voight. She had small parts on Broadway before landing the lead role in Hair, the landmark countercultural musical play that featured nudity. She later revealed that her male co-star in Hair, Steve Curry, was the father of her daughter. Wow. Busy, busy. She had a long-term <laughs> romance in the 1970s with musician Robbie Robertson of the band. This is like, this seems like a full and interesting life. Absolutely. Don't you think? Susan Onspot? Be a good yes. book. That's yeah. all we got. Well, there's yeah. no book now. Well, I'm just, just yeah, saying I mean, it would have been a good book. Yeah, it would have been a good book. A and little... in fact, Sky Bar is part of Necco's empire. Oh, Do, is God. that made out of chocolate anymore? Is it real chocolate or is it that carob stuff know, but that's when you, not actual chocolate? When you chocolate? pass the cursor over the Sky Bar image... It, it's really something that makes me think of you. There's a kid on a skateboard, and this, on the back <laughs> of the skateboard it says Skybar. 
<laughs> so you're suggesting that Neko did not market to the current generation. The, the graphics well. look yeah. like they're 60 years old. <laughs> <laughs> well, 60 seems The lettering is Skybar. It, <laughs> yeah. Look at this. <laughs> I yeah. know what sky bars are. I had one just the other day. <laughs> They're yeah. retro. Chuckles, though. But Mickey you know, but chuckles aren't sky made bar. by. Chuckles aren't made by Neko. Are they Chuckles? Uh, I did not see them. Uh, who but but now I'm nervous. I'm going over to Talbert's on my way out of here. <laughs> pick up a few dozen All right, let's boxes. get out of here. When we come back, we're going to do this thing that <laughs> may go right into the ground. I, know, I just, I just don't know. Barry Levinson. I'm Tony Kornheiser. You're listening to the Tony Kornheiser Show. This is Old Guy Radio for the day. Splish, splash, I was this is Bobby Darren. We played Bobby Darren a little while ago. We played um, Ma- uh, Mac, Mac the, the Knife. Knife. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. This was the first song that he ever had. When this got to be in the 50s. Recorded this on this day, April 10th, 1958. It so was... that's 60 years ago. Yeah. Right. 60 fi- years ago for Bobby Darren. Uh, written by um, Murray the K. Is oh, that Mark right? Kaufman? Yes. Is that uh, Murray the K in the swing and soiree playing Red Hot right. and Blue all the way? Who bet Darren could not write a song that began with the word splish splash and I was taking a bath <laughs> as suggested by Murray's mother, Jean Kaufman. Yeah. The song was credit- credited to Dean or Darren and Jean Murray. Murray Kaufman, because he was, was at a, WINS in Manhattan. He was the Manhattan. fifth Beatle, right? Well, that's what he claimed to be the fifth Beatle. <laughs> Everybody it, was the fifth Beatle. In all the pictures that I ever saw of the Beatles, I never saw <laughs> Murray the K. Oh, this is Murray. And he, he, he coined the term submarine race watching. This is... Way out of my youth. Uh, okay, we're out of this now. And we're Barry Levinson, a graduate of the American of University. The hey. American University. The American University. Yeah. David Aldridge. Wow, are you, are, Barry, are you using a phone from the 1920s? Because that was tremendous crackle there. Um, Barry uh, joins us. Go ahead. Can you hear me? I can hear you fine. Good, good, good. Barry has directed, among other things, and I hope we get to this later, Tin Men and Diner, really? and Avalon, and Rain Man, and the best sports movie I ever saw, The Natural. I hope Ugh. to get to that. But he's just directed uh, from HBO, which I saw last night, a movie called Paterno. Um, so I, I'm just sort of wondering why you did... Were you a Paterno fan at one point? What, what got you involved in this particular movie? Um, I mean, I, I knew the story, and I, obviously I knew about Paterno for years and years. But Al Pacino... Uh, had always wanted to do this project, and uh, he was having problems. Uh, there were different uh, scripts on it. It hadn't worked out, and he talked to me about it because we'd worked together a number of times about the project, and uh, I, I had a thought about how to handle it, which is the way the movie's done, and um, it went from there. That, it was interesting. When I heard that there was going to be a Paterno movie and Al Pacino was going to play Paterno, I really thought, wow, I, I didn't see that coming. Did you, uh, what made you think, or what made him think, because obviously he wanted to do this, why did he want to play Joe Paterno? Well, I think he was fascinated by the story, um, and uh, he's a big football fan. You know, uh, you wouldn't think that, you know, Pacino, you keep thinking, well, you know, he's a movie star, he doesn't know about sports, but he loves sports, loves football. And uh, I, to me, to be honest with you, when he said he wanted to do it, I could see the possibilities of that in terms of, you know, he's not a tall guy. He's short like Paterno. And he has certain characteristics that uh, I thought, you know, that, that, that can work out quite well. He actually looks like Joe Paterno in the movie. Mm, yeah. He really looks like Joe Paterno. Mm. And it's, it's yeah. sort of eerie when you see it. Do you recall your feeling when you learned, because now the Jerry Sandusky thing is over 10 years old now, yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, Barry, do you recall yeah. your feelings when you learned about that? And did you... Did you, at that time, think that it would be connected to Joe Paterno in the way that it turned out to be? Uh, not when the story first broke, although you do wonder um, about, you know, he had, for 30 years he worked with Sandusky, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you thought, well, I mean, he was there for 30 years, he's the head guy. Uh, obviously there were these rumors that were, you know, going around over a long period of time. And so you, but you don't necessarily think about, you know, Paterno in terms of this, you know, this incident and everything you've ever heard about Paterno in terms of his uh, ethics. He was an educator, you know, humanitarian. He was, uh, he believed in education. He was responsible for having a wing at Penn State uh, Library. You know, all of those positive things. He believed in the education for his football players. He graduated 85% of his of his, uh, you know, players, uh, you know, all of those very strong positives. And then this information began to come out. And they say, well, this is an interesting thing to look into. 
uh, and to see where, you know, where it leads. So I'm going to sort of give something away here, but the movie has been out on HBO and anybody can go see it, and I recommend that they do. But at the end of the movie, in the script that you're working with, you have a scene uh, in which the woman who is the lead reporter for, I guess, the Harrisburg Patriot Ledger, is that, is that the name of it, or Patriot News or something like that, she gets a phone call from a guy who says, I was a kid, this happened to me in 1976, I called Joe. And it said Joe Paterno and says yes. So it is utterly, in the end of the movie, Barry, it's utterly laid out that the writers and the people who are making this movie think that Joe Paterno knew and tried to brush it aside. Do you feel that way yourself? Well, I don't know if you're going to say brush it aside. Uh, I think the point being throughout the piece, and and I think we try to do it in the most um, detailed fashion of not simply having an agenda to the piece, is that you show you know, piece by piece, how this thing fits together. And uh, then initially you'd say, well, maybe they didn't know about this, maybe they didn't know about this. And then you begin to wonder, well, how many things did he know about but didn't somehow connect? Uh, why didn't he do more? You know, uh, I, I think that becomes the key thing is, why didn't he do more as it, as it evolves throughout the storytelling? Especially since... I mean, Joe Paterno. Joe Paterno is the one guy in college football, if you had to say, and I'll go back 40 years, mm -hmm. you say one guy who was above it all and, mm -hmm. and did it the right way. Barry, everybody would have said Paterno. Yeah. Everybody in America yeah, would have said absolutely. Paterno. So I, I guess there's... Look, I guess, it, it, go ahead. It, in the piece, in the piece, you know, Paterno says in one of the scenes, I, you know, I wish I, I wish I would have done more. Yes. And, and I think that's the key to it. You know, he wasn't, uh, you know, he wasn't the the person who was directly involved in it, but it's hard to believe in the context that he ran that department, that he was the face of the football program, that there are certain things you go, you know, we got to look into it. How come this hasn't followed up? Why don't we do this? Check mm -hmm. this out, et cetera, et cetera. And that would be the question mark. You know, as I say, this is not a, a film that slams Paterno no. straight out from the beginning. It's trying to as, as, as we do it, is piece by piece, these little questions continue to come up throughout the film. Are you influenced at all um, by everything that has gone on in Hollywood with Harvey Weinstein and the Me Too movement and all of these things? Did you say, I want to get involved in this because this is, this is a subject I want to deal with given the change in the culture? Well, we started this before all of this happened. Oh, okay. In terms of uh, Weinstein, yeah. Do you think that, so, uh, in, in hindsight, okay. do you think that what happened to Paterno, and I mean, I know he died shortly after this, and, but the, you know, the, the statue, the, the mm -hmm. way that Paterno is thought of now, do you think that that is a fair way to think of him now? Well, <clears throat> I mean, that's a good question, Tony. I mean, how do you think of him? Uh, all we can do in the piece, there are two parts to it. In the film, you're trying to tell the story with as much uh, credibility as you can. You know, there's five years of research that HBO did, and, you know, believe me, in order to get the script, the amount of vetting that went into it uh, was enormous. And that's generally the way it, uh, you know, it should be. So, I mean, so it's, it's carefully vetted and putting it together. Now, how do we look at Paterno now, X number of years later? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think you have to look at it and say, look, this, this was obviously uh, a powerful man who, who, who ran a program, who did an enormous amount, you know, of, of, of good without question. And then the big question is, how is it that this could happen under, you know, under his leadership, that this can take place and he knows nothing about anything for over all of these years? You know, there are emails that went back and forth where he's saying, what's going on with so-and-so? Yeah, what about yeah. this? You know, I mean, there are all these emails, et cetera. So at some point, you have to say something was wrong. Something was not taken care of. There were young boys that were victimized. Why didn't, why didn't this move ahead to resolve this problem? What happened? I think that, um, I mean, I remember talking about this because we had to deal with it every day when it, when it was mm -hmm. in the news. And an explanation I heard, and I don't know that it's totally correct, but I always sort of leaned on it and thought it made sense to me, was that Joe Paterno 
when he was born and where he went to school and the great Catholicism of his life, that this was something yeah. he could not deal with mm. personally and preferred to just, you know, to move it to the side. Do you have any thoughts of that, Barry? Does that make any sense to you? Well, I mean, I think it does. You know, I, I don't want to suddenly give, you know, uh, answers to things that you can't yeah. explain. But if you look at it, you say in the culture that he grew up in, you know, as a religious, you know, person, you say, well, I mean, d- does this, is, is this connected in some way? Is this part of the puzzle? Mm-hmm. Yes. I mean, it's a valid question. Yeah. Uh, certainly. Can I, can I move you off this, please, and ask about Tin Man and Diner and <laughs> Avalon? <laughs> can I ask about that and Wag the Dog and Rain Man and the Natural... <laughs> Can I, I mean, that, those movies, well, certainly, certainly Diner, so many people, it seems, started there. Mm-hmm. Kevin Bacon, Daniel Stern, Ellen Barkin, Mickey Rourke. I mean, was that, everybody was, they were just babies then. Mm-hmm. How did you find yeah. them? How did, what do you think of that now? Well, it's one of those things, you know, <clears throat> Uh, Ellen Chenoweth, who I've worked with, uh, and she she was the casting director on this, and I worked with her all the way back to Diner over all these years. And, you know, she brings in various people, and you start to look through it. Now, you know, we had to go through 500 auditions with various uh, guys to get that cast, 500 readings of doing it. However, in <clears throat> Ellen Barkin's case, she was the only female that came in mm. for that role, of Beth, and uh, that was it. So as soon as she came in, she read, you go, okay, she's perfect. For the guys, it's a combination of, one, they have to be talented to be able to do the roles, but you want to be able to say, do they fit together? Because that's also part of it. Mm -hmm. Rhythmically, well, they work together. So that's like a, sometimes when someone doesn't get a job, you say, well, I wasn't good enough, you know, they didn't like me. That's not the case. There are a lot of things that make up how you cast it. In a sense, it's like putting together elements of an orchestra. Mm -hmm. You need different types of sounds, et cetera, for everybody to fit together. But that... That's your life, right? I mean, you knew those yeah. people. That's your life. So when you saw yeah. them, when you saw Rourke then, who doesn't look anything like he looks now, no. when you saw Rourke then or Bacon then, did you say, yeah? Did you say of Rourke, that's Boogie Sheftel? Sure, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Yeah, no, they you just, you know, certain people come in and um, they spark you and you make adjustments. In the case of Paul Reiser, yeah, he was uh, in Paul... Paul only came with his friend. His friend came to audition. He was, I think they were going to the movies or something. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Ellen said, you should see this guy. And he came in, and Paul was sort of like, I don't know why I'm here. But I'm just going to the movies with my friend, and et cetera. And I cast him in the film. And uh, I just, he did have this quality that I thought would be really, you know, good for the film. And uh, during it, we just kept adding and adding and adding to um, you know his character. Steve Gutenberg was in that too, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. these are these are guys that yes. I mean, they yeah. it, that was like, you know, how they call Miami of Ohio the cradle of coaches. Right, right. The Barry <laughs> Levinson set was like the cradle of actors. Yeah. I mean, these these people became very big stars. That must that must give you a great sense of pride and accomplishment. Yeah, it did. You know, I mean, it, you know, look, Diner when it first when I first did it, you know, it had this troubled beginning because the studio. Absolutely hated the film. I mean, uh, the, the reason the film is that way is they, they thought it was so bad that they didn't even want to give notes <laughs> to change things because wow. they thought it was just a complete mess. Wow. <laughs> and so I was able to, somebody said, to the, so they changed the movie? I said, no, they didn't change anything. They gave up on it. It was just literally unreleasable in their minds. Wow. Where are these and, uh, people working now? <laughs> <laughs> what business are they in? Are they owning Domino's now? You know, I tell you a funny story. I, I meet with the executive uh, after he sees the film, and he said, "Well, you got a lot to learn about editing." I said, "You know, I, I get, you know, I, I guess so." He said, "Let me tell you something." He said, um, "In the diner scene, the one guy says, are you going to eat it?'" And the other guy says, "I don't know. You're going to eat it. If you're not going to eat it, he says, right there, cut." And get on with the story. <laughs> and I said, 
Well, that is the story. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable. That th- those are, I mean, the three of them are just. Pr- yeah, Danny DeVito is. I mean, t- yeah. who would cast Danny De- like Danny DeVito? <laughs> That's brilliant, right? That's brilliant, Danny yeah. DeVito. Yeah. yeah. No, he's uh, he's great. He was great in Tin Man. He had a great, great, uh, and uh, ja- and uh, Jackie Gale with his partner talking about Bonanza. That is not a <laughs> yes. of the West. Yeah, there's. I mean, there's so many things. There's that. There's the Bonanza thing. There's the Sinatra stuff in the in these movies. There's the yeah. Colts test. Mm-hmm. Who came up with the? You did. You came up with the Colts test. That had to be based on something real in your life. Oh yeah, yeah. My cousin Eddie. My cousin Eddie gave it. Gave his. Uh, gave his wife to be a uh, a football test. Yeah. That's so awesome. So great. <laughs> but I let, but here, let, let me just tell you the, the follow up to it. He, I see. I, he calls me up. This, he said, you know, I've now watched the movie five times, you know, Diner. I said, really? Yeah. He said, you know something? I realized it, uh, it didn't make any sense, you know, uh, to give her the football test. I said, really? He says, yeah, you know, because two weeks after we're married, she can't remember one answer. <laughs> that was his. <laughs> so, so many that's, what he, that's what he took away. <laughs> so great. <laughs> Only real story. people could do that. All right. <laughs> I mentioned yeah. Wag the Dog, and I mentioned Rain Man, and I mentioned The Natural. I would that's... just say, and I don't, I don't know anything about making movies, but the shot in The Natural where the light falls on Glenn Close. Oh, yeah. That's breathtaking. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. It's absolutely breathtaking. I, I, yeah. That's your idea, I assume, yeah. right? Yeah, because there is that moment, you know, um, you know, look, in its time, you know, the natural got criticized for doing those kinds of moments, you know, mm-hmm. that are, are larger than life, obviously, you know, because it is a fable. And um, it, it was, you know, you had to wait for a certain time of the day. The, the light had, the sun had to be going down. And we had to get a hat for her that uh, would allow for the light to come through to create that kind of an effect. But I thought that was the fun of the piece. You know, it was like, you know, much bigger than life. It's a fable is is what it is. And um, so, you know, you work for that. And uh, I remember that particular thing for some critics immediately jumped on it and criticized it for, you know, doing that kind of a moment because they – uh, critics, by by and large, aren't baseball fans, yeah. so they, they didn't connect to it. The way, uh, it that the way scene the is general audience. Did. That scene is so great. The scene where the blood pops out of Redford's <laughs> yeah. chest. I'm, yeah. that, I mean, I, I I do. I think I think the two greatest sports movies I've ever seen, and they just appeal to me, are The Natural and Chariots of Fire. That's that's mm-hmm. just for me. A lot of people will say. Uh, the De Niro movie, oh, Raging, Raging Bull, Bull or, or Hoosiers or something like that. Barry, what, you're obviously a sports fan. What's the best sports movie you ever watched? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, as a kid, um, it, you know, it was the, um, you know, Pride of the Yankees. Yeah, uh, Lou Gehrig, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. because, but, you know, Gehrig couldn't, uh, was awkward playing, you know, the, be, playing baseball. Mm-hmm. I think that they, didn't they have to flip the... Uh, yeah, to it, turn they it had off. to yes. do it. Yes. They had to turn it around. And yeah, because well, he was because yeah, he, he was a righty. That's right. He was a righty. Yeah. Gary it was Gary Cooper. Yeah, yeah that turned yeah. around. Yeah. I think that. Yeah. I mean, I just so, think. Go ahead. There was that long period, you know, when we did the natural, when we were making it. There was a lot of you know stuff like why make up baseball movies? Baseball movies don't work because I think it was after uh, Fear Strikes Out in the early fifties, and that didn't do well. There wasn't mm. a baseball movie, I don't believe, really. That connected until years later. Yeah, bang so the drum. Bang slow. the drum slowly. Yeah, bang the drum slowly. That, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. it wasn't. But it wasn't a big hit. So right. It was like you know. Well, I don't know about that. And so it was a long time. And then after the natural, then there was a whole slew of films right. that did quite well. Are you still? Are you still a, a Baltimore sports fan? Oh yeah, absolutely. Are you a Ravens yeah. fan? Yes. Can you yeah, ex- after the Colts? After the yeah. Colts left and not having a team for 12 years, and then when we got the Ravens, you know, and that became my team. And I, I watch Indianapolis games only to hope that they lose. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love it. That's yeah. awesome. Well, that's what you should do. Because, because Ursay, Ursay is one of the great villains in American sports. Sure. In the cover of yeah. Darkness in 1984, taking that team away. Yeah. So, but I got to ask you, what, yeah. what in God's name are they looking at with RG3? 
<laughs> what is that? What is that? You just signed... I don't know. I, it's hard to figure that out. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. No, not to me. Anyway. But, I, I mean, you know, how long that'll last, you know, it makes headlines, you know. But the question is, you know, is that is that for real? You know, does he... I mean, look, the guy had, you know, great ability, and then yes. things all went off the tracks, and things happened to him, injuries, etc. cetera. But, uh, you know... The you know the Ravens have a lot of holes that they have to fill, unfortunately, and uh, it's a big question mark where they're going to go from here on in. So I and, just and in terms of Harbaugh, you know, who who basically has been a 500, you know, um, uh, coach since um, you know the the Super Bowl, so that he hasn't done you know a, a particularly strong record in these last five plus years. So we talk about this all the time. I mean, everybody has uh, thousands of lines from thousands of movies. But in Wag the Dog, when Dustin Hoffman says that, that's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> this is nothing. <laughs> Two of that. the four horsemen from the Just four horsemen of the apocalypse. Right, David Aldridge is here, who is yes. in the Hall of Fame of Stop. the American Stop. University. Stop. Stop. And he wrote down this question, and we'll close on this. What dorm did you live in at a year? <laughs> uh, what a pertinent question. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I didn't live in any dorm. Because wow. um, I, I lived off campus, ah, gotcha. and I and I worked down the street at Channel Nine. Yeah, they had a sure. they had a, a there was used to be like a program, and I got into it was you know a, where I I learned you know I was a floor director and assistant director. I used to do the hand puppets on the kitty show Ranger How. Is that know, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I used to run from one class and then go do the midday news and then run back and take another class and uh, and so. That, that was my experience at AU, running back and forth. Fortunately, Channel 9 was nearby. It so still it is. Yeah. But, I, yeah. but, uh, but I used to live across Chain Bridge. I think it was Chain Bridge in, uh, yeah, in Virginia. In Virginia. So it was relatively close by, but I, I didn't live on campus. Well, thank you so much for being on. The Paterno movie I watched last night, I recommend everybody watch it, because you've got to have HBO, but, <laughs> but watch it. It was, a, it was a real joy for you to be on the show. Thanks very much, Barry. Great. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Yep. How about that, boys awesome. and girls? <laughs> How about that? <laughs> he did those movies. Yeah. Those, awesome. these yeah. Rain Man. It's a pretty good run. Wapner. <laughs> 15 minutes to Wapner. 15 minutes to Wapner. This I mean, is nothing. <laughs> it's nothing. <laughs> Fantastic. We'll get out of here. We'll come back with emails and a jingle. I'm Tony Kornheiser. You're listening to The Tony Kornheiser Show. Couldn't hit the driver. <laughs> Should have stung a three. But here comes my friend I know it. Oh. from NBC. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> Selvis Costello, this is really good, isn't it? Susie, can't you see? Pushing 43. Had a good start and fell apart as a bug. Stiff and nutter, I, 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 who again left on me? Oh, Sansy, oh, Sansy, maybe. That is so good. lovely. <laughs> Sean Morrison so from Frederick Mellon. That is well great. Done. That's fantastic. That's that is just great. Sean's from Greece. Sean's always great. Oh, I just thought at the no, beginning it's I thought from it was Greece. Awesome. That's Sandy from Greece. Okay, that is great. so brilliant. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> Great job, That's Sean. great. <laughs> I apologize for getting that wrong. I thought it was Allison from uh, Elvis Costello at the beginning. Is sounded what it sounded like. Yes. Yes, it uh, let me thank David for uh, doing a whole segment here. Let me thank Barry Levinson. God knows why he wanted to come on. <laughs> I, I was told he was a fan of him. I don't believe that for a second. Oh, he, but yeah, he was yeah, really good. It's yes. really good. Let me thank the sponsors, First Leaf Wines and Framebridge. Remember to listen and subscribe to new and archived episodes of the Tony Kornheiser Show wherever you listen to podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play. If you listen to the show through iTunes, please leave us a review. That way we get more listeners. That way we get more money. That way we sell more breakfast. Yes. There you go. From Nick Owsley in Cambridge, Massachusetts, Dr. Hoff-Woff, hope you enjoyed your recent trip to Augusta National. It occurred to me last night while lying in bed and thinking about the Masters instead of counting sheep that pars for each nine there are palindromes. The front is 454 343 and the back is 443 545 I figured as someone who also has a thing for numbers, you would have noticed this while walking the grounds last week and reciting numbers to yourself over and over again, or at least you would appreciate this little fact. I do. 
I do appreciate I didn't realize that. Didn't, I did not either. That's great. From Eric Gribble in Newport Beach, California. I'm a longtime listener. I've recently introduced my father-in-law to your podcast. On Tuesday, April 10th at 7 a.m., he will be at the corner of Jennifer Street Northwest and Wisconsin Avenue for his birthday celebration. Are you here? Is Mike here for birthdays? Mike is here. There yeah. we go. Happy it would make his day to get a shout out from you and it would go a long way to making me his favorite son-in-law. If you have a few hours after the show, he'd be more than willing to give you a brief oral history of the Green Bay Packers, current Wisconsin politics or anything else that you didn't think you could ever know too much of. Happy birthday, Mike. Uh, from Tim Campbell in Satellite Beach, Florida. Greetings from sunny Florida. Would like to raise my hand and nominate, vote, and second me as the official wine guru for the Tony Kornheiser Show. Having listened for years and having heard far too many oh my gods when you guys and gals talk wine. Step one is to send some wine selections to Mr. Tony and have him and the gang taste and review. Simply send me the address of Chatter. The best place to send wine is there's always someone there to sign for it. Goal is to get all of you all away from some of the swill you're drinking and seemingly feeling it is good wine, we can do better. We'll only sell red wines until we get the palates better perfected. Salute. That's great. That's awesome. Just don't get the wine tyrant involved. Don't get the wine. Yeah, exactly. Doug Mell, Eau Claire, Wisconsin. I'm riding home from work Monday listening to Will Bond quiz you about what famous people he dined with in Arizona, and I'm screaming, Alice Cooper. Tell him Alice Cooper. As everyone knows, Alice has lived in Phoenix for 50 years and is a local businessman, mainly in restaurants and a fixture on golf courses. Sure, John McCain is famous, as is Larry Fitzgerald and Sir Charles, but Alice is right up there. In fact, last July, respondents to a poll conducted by an alternative weekly picked Alice as their choice for U.S. Senate candidate. <laughs> How about that? So next time Will Bond brags about who he dined with in, in Arizona, throw Alice Cooper at him. <clears throat> from Dan Murphy, not that Dan Murphy, uh, in Dan, Madisonville, Louisiana. Can you please give a shout out to my brother-in-law, Paul Scoriels, who's a golf coach and civics teacher at St. Paul's High School in Covington, Louisiana. He's escorting a group of students to Washington this week and decided he needed to go to Chatter. He's supposed to be there this morning. Is Paul here? Paul yeah, here. Yeah. He's hey, Paul. supposed to be there this morning, April 10th, having breakfast. You can please tell him to buy me a double XL Chatter shirt. We wow. haven't come Just in yet. We've both we'll been be loyal little small. since the beginning. We appreciate all the laughs that you and the gang provide. Um, from Bruce Bryce Perry, rather, Bryce Perry in Savannah, Georgia, where we were recently or close to it. Michael, you were in Savannah, and that's the airport you went into. I am not sure if you are aware, but there's a Russian television similar to the Americans that portrays a CIA agent living in Russia called Adaptation. When can we expect your cameo in the uttering of your famous line, Kakov Vistrel, also known as What a Shot? <laughs> I want to make sure um, you yell Wi-Fi and representative at my remote control so that I will record it. From Charlie Burtz in Springfield, Virginia. The Ravens, I wish I knew this. The Ravens have just announced that RG3 tore his right ACL yesterday while signing his one-year deal. <laughs> Thanks to an extra wobbly chair. The trainers have gotten right on the situation, assuring us that the chair will receive Shanahan. that fourth leg cushion thingy as soon as possible. From Tracy Tran in Fairfax. So the NHL playoffs are going to be on the Golf Channel. Are we going to hear Michael's analysis of Alex Ovechkin's topspin on his slap shot? What about uh, the each ice's stimp meter? And who has the real home ice advantage? I'll hang up and listen. The NHL playoffs are on the Golf Channel? Indeed. They are? Why? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why aren't they on NBC Sports? They ran out of real estate. Wow. That is weird and unsettling. Yes. This is the <laughs> Golf Channel. Bring on Sansy. Uh, if you're out on your bike tonight, everyone, as always, do wear white. But we don't have the Shaputzfa to do it. Thanks, everybody. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Please take this. Don't be shy. Those are my friends. Some good old fashioned family entertainment for you tonight. I'm alone, always alone. Maybe somebody can help later on. Cupid the room farewell, but said goodbye to me. They say in love you fell, you always trip so easily. Your love's a carousel, and I'm too short to ride. Excuse me, mademoiselle, but I may have to try.
I had to be 